Hello, I'm Gabriel Nieto, and welcome to People in Perspective. Today joining me is Adriana Vargas, who is a foster parent. So tell me, how or like, what got you inspired to become a foster parent? Well, um, about 20 years ago, uh, one of my first co-workers used to be, um, she used to work for the foster care, the CFS, so the um, foster care program in the state of Illinois. And um, she was a social worker, and she told me about the stories, you know, some of the stories that she dealt with, um, the kids that she dealt with. And it inspired me, you know, when I heard the stories, I'm like, you know what, I can, I can do that, and I want to help. And eventually when I'm ready, I can, you know, I, I want to do that. So you figure out, like, oh, that's interesting. I want to try to do that. Uh, yes. So how did this start? Like, how, what gave you the push to be like, okay, today's the time? Um, I did actually start applying when my son was six years old. Um, but then soon after that, I was pregnant with my daughter and I said, okay, I need to wait till she gets a little older. And my friends knew that I wanted, you know, that I eventually I wanted to be a foster parent. Um, so one of my friends called me up and said, there's this new program. Um, it's a federal run program. So um, are you interested? Here's a number, call this lady. Uh, so I called her and she's, it was on a Thursday and she said, the first class starts on Saturday. I said, okay. <laughs> so I signed up and by Saturday I was already taking um, the training for the foster care. So it was like, it just fell on my lap and I was like, I need to jump on it now and I did. So how did the first wave of kids come? Um, so the program that I, that I uh, foster, the foster care program that I'm in, it's a little bit different from the state program. Um, the children that we receive are actually children from the border. So it's immigrant children um, coming from other countries. Uh, the first uh, children that I received was actually about a year ago. And it was a set of uh, three siblings. Um, they were four nine and 11 um, and they were from um, Honduras so um, it was it was very interesting it was difficult to hear their stories um, all the trauma that they had to go through um, in their country and on their journey to the US um, it was very traumatic um, it's it was it was hard to hear their stories how many of these kids did you take in? And like, where did they come from? You said Honduras, like, they came from there. Where other places did so, they come from? So, um, till now I've had 22 foster children and over the last year, um, they've come from Honduras, Ecuador, um, Guatemala. Um, those are the three so far, but I mean, there's children in the program that come from Brazil, uh, Venezuela, Colombia, um, El Salvador. Uh, we haven't, as far as I know, received any children from Mexico yet, um, but most of the children are from Central or South America. So these kids, when they come to you, do they reunite with their family once you've done taking care of them? Where do they go? Yes, yeah, so any foster care program, um, the mission is you know, to reunite them with their family, whether it's a state program and you know, the children are removed from their homes for, you know, that's what the regular um, foster care program is. Um, the mission is to reunite them with their, with their family, whether it's their parents or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle, uh, but that's, that's the mission. And it's the same thing with this uh, federal run program. Um, it's, the purpose is, you know, to reunite them with a family member here in the United States. Um, so most of the most of the children, it's a short term um, stay with me. So it can range from two weeks to three months. The longest I've had so far is three months, and the shortest has been two weeks. So with, they all have happy endings at the end. They for all the most part, friends. yes. Um, some of the children are going with, you know, an aunt that they've never met before. So it's very difficult. So although they're excited because it's family. It's also difficult because it's somebody they've never met before, somebody they've never spent time with, somebody that they don't really know. To them, it's a stranger. 
Um, and although we, you know, my family and I are strangers to them at the beginning, they kind of get used to it, they're comfortable, they feel safe. Um, but now it's like starting over, you know, going to somebody that they don't know again, um, and it's starting over and it's difficult for them. So what was the age range, you said again, for these kids you took care of? Um, so the, the, the youngest I've had is two years old, and the oldest has been 17 years old. Was it hard taking care of the two-year-old? It was very difficult, um, not so much because of their age, but because I got very attached to them, because they were home with me all day. Um, and I was working from home now, I'm, you know, I do have a full-time job, um, so I do go in the office, but you know, while I had her, I was still working from home, so I was at home all day, and I spent all day with her, and it was like, to me, she was my child. <laughs> I got very attached to her and it was difficult seeing her go. How about the oldest? Have you ever any any trouble with these kids at all? They all um, they all come with, like I said, with a lot of trauma and every child reacts different um, to that trauma. So some of the children, you know, act out, um, you know, they don't want to listen, uh, they get mad very easily, um, you know, they don't want to eat, or they cry a lot. Uh, but fortunately, like, they have a lot of therapists available to them and counseling. Um, and they prepare us for situations like that and how to deal with it. And that's what all the training they give us is for, so that we can be as prepared as possible. Obviously, every situation is different. Every child, like I said, is different. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's hard. Uh, sometimes trying to figure out like okay this is this child this is the way they are and this is how I got to deal with this because even though they're siblings like I said they act out different so you just have to figure out how each child is and how to deal with them. What would you say to any other people like interested into foster parenting? Like it's very rewarding. Um, I love giving back to the community and this was always one way, you know, for me to be able to give back. Um, because even though we spend only two weeks with them, or it could, like I said, three months, they do get very attached to us too. And, you know, they do call me, they still keep in touch with them. And none of them are here in Illinois. They actually go out to different states um, to, with their families. So I don't, they're not close by, I can't see them. But they do call me and they do keep in touch. And, you know, they tell us, we miss you, you know, we love you guys, we can't wait to see you again. So that to us is very rewarding. Um, so if you're, you know, for anybody interested in being a foster parent, if you're looking to make a difference in somebody's life, this is a great way to do it. Well, it's, it's challenging, but it's very rewarding. Well, thank you so much for coming here. Well, I'm Gabriel Nieto, and this was People in Perspective.